So far we talked about creating pixel masks, when we have the white as the visible parts and black as the hidden parts. There's another way to create masks in Photoshop, and that is called a vector mask. Vector masks can be created easily with the pen tool. The advantage of vector masks is that they are completely resolution independent, so whenever you resize the image, make it smaller and then uh, larger again, you won't lose quality, because it's resolution independent, as I said. But there's also another big advantage that you can very easily modify the edges using the Bezier curves. If you've never used the pen tool before, it might be a bit challenging to learn how to work with it, but in this video I'm going to show you how to do a selection of this statue. It's quite complicated along the edges, but it's not impossible. So let me just first select the pen tool. This is the pen tool here. And on the top we can choose between different options. And if you want to use the pen tool for a vector mask, to create a vector mask, it's best to use path. So I'm going to use the path mode and I'm going to zoom closer. Now, it doesn't matter where you start, but um, just click on a point where you would like to start the selection. After that, it's up to you how precise you want to be. Whenever you uh, click with the pen tool, you add the new anchor point. Now, at some points like this here, if you want to turn uh, properly and not follow this handle here, then you can alt click on the point and then you will be able to have another direction of your curve. Now, I won't be that precise here, I'm just going to roughly follow this uh, line. And remember, you can always uh, adjust the handles and the anchor points as well. By holding down Command, you can click on these points and you can adjust them. So I'm going to just adjust this a little bit more, something like that. And again here, I Alt click and then I can create the next curve in a different direction. So when you have to change direction, remember this keyboard shortcut alt clicking on the last anchor point that you created, like just like here. So you can see the curve wants to follow the handle, but if I alt click on it, I can take another direction. And once again here it's the same, alt click, take another direction, alt click, and then I will try to use the least amount of anchor points, like this whole curve can be done in one selection or one uh, between two anchor points, I can create one curve. And that's the advantage of uh, using the pen tool and creating vector masks as well. If you need to have very nice and clean edges, uh, with the pen tool you can do that, and with vector masks. So this is something that would be much more difficult with the brush tool or any other selection tools to have these nice, clean and crisp edges. So I'm just continue doing the same thing. Create a curve, alt click, create another curve, alt click. And then here I try to do this in two points. I will add one curve here. And then I will add another curve below, probably all the way there. I can do in two points, then I alt click here and then I can finish here at the bottom of selecting the statue. Maybe I just go back a couple of steps. I want to be a bit more precise here at the bottom as well. Okay, now here at the all the way at the bottom I just make a selection like this. Let me check. Yeah, that's okay. Then I continue, and if I want to use this, I probably have to uh, retouch that leaf, which is in front of the statue, but that's not part of this video, we don't have to worry about that at the moment. So I just want to finish my selection, which is actually not a selection yet, it's just a path, but the path can be converted into a selection or into a vector mask. Now. You can also decide to turn your uh, path, which you create with the pen tool, into a selection and then save it as a pixel mask. So that, that is also possible. But once you create a very intricate path, it's better to keep it as vector. So then you have the 
advantage of better uh, editability, which you will lose if you turn it into a pixel mask. But I am going to show you both of these options. So I just want to show you how I finish the whole selection. Here is a bit more intricate, this part. I need to go with more anchor points. And as you can see, most of the curves, I try to click on the top of the curve, somewhere in the middle, and then create another segment. A good example where I have to follow lots of curves and I try to simplify them as much as I can. So again, in the middle of this big curve, I added an anchor point. And whenever you drag the handles out, try to follow um, the direction where your path will go. So let me just show you this once again. It's a good example here. That's my beginning point and that's the end point of this curve. So that's my big curve. It's like a half moon. And I would like to create this curve. So I am clicking here in the middle and then I drag out in the direction of the curve itself. And I will stop when I can see my curve is in place. Okay, so that's the way you should think. And then the next point, as you can see, because the handle is symmetrical and it's in the middle of the curve, the next point, if I hover over it, my curve will almost be perfect. But if I click on that point to end my curve, I can also align it a little bit even more. And we are done. So that's the way you create a path along the edges of a selection. But now we have to do something with this to be able to separate the object from its background. Because most of the time that's why we are using masking, we are separating different elements from an image. So I would like to turn this first of all into a pixel mask and then I show you how to do a vector mask. So if you want to use this as a pixel mask like in the previous uh, videos, all you need to do is still having the pen tool selected, right click on the image and choose make selection first of all and then you can click here in the make selection option just simply OK and then you can click now on the mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel so that will create a mask just like before um, which we can check alt click on the mask icon and then see black hides white shows so whatever falls in the selection will be visible whatever is outside will be uh, transparent. So that's how we can turn the path which we created with a pen tool into a pixel mask. But let's see how we can turn this into a vector mask. So I'm going back a couple of steps until I will see my path again. And that's what I would like to save now as a vector mask. And all I need to do to achieve this is to command click on the mask icon. So the same thing, I have the path selected. By the way, it, to make sure it's selected, use the path selection tool, this black arrow. Click on the path, make sure you don't move it around, and then hold down Command or Control on PC and click on the mask icon here in the layers panel. If you do that properly, you will get a vector mask from your path. It might be useful to turn the background layer into a normal layer before you do this, just to make sure it works. So let me just show you, it, there's my background layer, I just went back a couple of steps. To make sure it works, double click on the background layer first, then click on OK, and then make sure pass is still selected, and then command or control click on the mask icon. Sometimes if you have a background layer, it might cause a problem. So. Now we have a vector mask and here in the properties panel we can see that this is, yes, it's a vector mask. This little icon represents the vector mask, this one represents the pixel mask. And it's good to know that with this version of masking you can actually um, edit all these anchor points. So if I probably want to, I don't know, adjust something here, I can just use any of the selection tools, the path selection tools, and I can adjust them, move them around, and uh, basically I can continue editing the curve. But this curve, or this path, is now masking the object out from its original background. Also interesting technique is when you combine a vector mask with a pixel mask. Let's just say I would like to see through this part here. This probably belongs to the background. 
Now, I would be able to add a new part to this uh, curve or this path by using again the pen tool and then zoom close and just draw over this part here to get rid of it. As you can see, I quite quickly can do that. But I can also use a vector mask and a pixel mask together if I want to. Maybe there are a couple of parts which is difficult to do with the pen tool. So for those parts, I can actually add a pixel mask. And now I have two masks, a vector mask and a pixel mask. So let's just see what happens if I use the quick selection tool now and draw over this part here. Okay, so I quickly draw on, uh, over this and I would like to fill this with black. There's a keyboard shortcut very useful for the foreground color or the backspace to fill in to the selection. So my foreground color is black and that's what's going to hide this part on the mask or the backspace. And because my pixel mask was selected, I filled this selected part with black. That means I want to hide it. If you want to fill with the background color, that's command backspace or control backspace on the PC, the keyboard shortcut for it. So now you can see how we combined a pixel mask and the vector mask together. Another useful thing to know about the vector mask is that how can you invert it? Because as you can see with the pixel mask, there's the invert option, but for the vector mask, there's no invert option. But what you can do still is to select the path itself and here on the top, choose the option called subtract front shape. If you choose that, that will invert the visible and the hidden areas. So basically it's the same thing as inverting pixel mask. If I change it back to combine shapes, it will go back to normal. And remember I said vector masks are great for having crisp edges, but still it has an option to feather the edges. Here in the properties panel, if I increase the feather option, we will be able to soften the edges of the selection. It's rare that you need this option, but it's good to know about it. So that's all you need to know about how to work with the pen tool and create vector masks, and maybe even combine that with pixel masks. But we will take this to the next step in the next video, where I'm going to show you how to use a vector mask for an effect in Photoshop.